to mention, I don't know if she did mention, I didn't hear if she did, but 8 o'clock on the 30th in the, in the morning, we're going to meet here at 8 o'clock. So if you don't have a waiver, we'll have some extra waivers. If you want to forge some names, we might try to do that. I don't know. We're probably not allowed to do that. Yeah, we're just going to keep see what's up with the weather north. Um, it's supposed to be perfect north, so it's supposed to be cold. Um, so we can go tubing. So hopefully the weather stays good there and stays cold. I don't mind cold weather. I like to be warm, but I don't mind cold weather. We're just going to sit here a minute, guys. I just want to talk to you a minute. I want to clean house for a minute. What I'm going to say, I don't want you to take offense to it. I don't want you to think I'm being hard. I'm just being truthful. I don't normally get on social media and I don't normally get on Facebook and see what everybody's doing. But last week I did. Saw some stuff on there I didn't like. If you're going to represent the house of God and represent the Lord, you need to clean your Facebooks up. You need to clean your social media up. The language that's being used on there, the provocative language, the innuenda that's being used, it's not good, it's not healthy, it's not productive, and it's not promoting the kingdom of God. Not saying it's any of you, but if it is, clean it up. Clean it up. If Jesus came and paid the price that he paid for us, we ought to walk in that. We ought to walk in that freedom that he gave us. He paid it off on that price. And what would you do if your child had to pay the same price? And then everyone stomped all over that. You wouldn't like it. He don't like it either. I'm asking to clean up. And break it off. Break it off. Right now. Right now. Break it off in Jesus' name. Everything that's holding you back. Break it off. Because he loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his son to die that you could live, that you could have freedom then you can enjoy this life. Ironically, today we're going to talk about love. This is a form of love right here. Discipline is a form of love. He loves you so much. I'm telling you right now. He loves you so much that he gave me this message yesterday. He's still giving me at the end of the week or Saturday, still giving me a message. And I think that's so I don't put me in it. That's all about him. <clears throat> Darling, thank you for that. You did a great job. Great job. She's growing. She's growing up. I want to say something about this woman right here before she steps down. Come here. You guys had the drive of this woman. It could take you a long way. Her drive and tenacity to do everything that God has called her to do is over the top. I've never seen someone step in the way of the Lord like I've seen you. I've watched her grow in the past two years. It's been incredible. She's had a long journey. It's been rough at times. But she's learned to set powerful people under her that lift her up. I've scalded her I don't know how many times. I've gotten onto her I don't know how many times. But I love her. I love her. She's my sister. She's amazing and she's learning. She's going to continue to learn and walk in the fullness that God has for her. Learn a little bit about her if you want to know a little bit about her. Learn about her, what she's been through in the past two years. 
and that she's still standing strong. She's still tweaking everything in her life to make it about Jesus. Everything making it about Jesus. Thank you, daughter. Bless you. If you have your Bibles this morning, thank you guys for coming out in the snow. Again, 1978, I think the churches were still open. They just plowed the snow and drove through it. Is that right, 78? I remember when I was in my police car one time and I was, I was driving through the snow. I got home. I was just trying to get home. I got home and my, my, whole, my whole engine was packed with snow because I'd busted through so many drifts. I mean, it literally went through the grill and just packed my whole engine with snow. I was determined to get there just as much as I'm determined to please my Lord and Savior. I remember when Shelly and I started dating. We began our love affair. It was amazing. September 5th, 2012. was the first day I laid eyes on her. And I loved her from the very beginning. Matter of fact, when I saw her on Christian Mingle, after my divorce, when I was dating, when I went to date somebody, I went to Christian Mingle, and I saw this woman on Christian Mingle, and it was, <laughs> the Lord said, that's going to be your bride. He said, it's going to be a roller coaster ride. <laughs> and it was. It was so much fun. April 5th, 2013, I proposed to her. September 5th. All right. I gotta get to keep all these right. September 5th, 2013. I married her. So proud of where God's brought us. What I'm gonna talk about this morning, you might that's what I prayed about offense earlier. I don't want anybody to take offense. I don't want you to think I'm being harsh or being cruel. When I talk about cleaning up your, your, your act, clean it up. Your Facebooks, clean it up. Just clean it up, please. Represent God well. Represent this body well. If you have your Bibles, turn in 1 John 4, 7. First John 4, 7. This is an NASB version. There's a lot of different versions out there, but this is NASB. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. 1 John 4, 8 says this. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. What is your perception of love this morning? What is your perception of your ideal of love, what love means to you? It can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Love has caused a lot of people, the wrong concept of love has caused a lot of people to sin greatly. How do you show love? How do you show love to, to one another? You do it in the right way? You do it in the Jesus way? Some don't. We're going to learn that this morning. And what I'm going to say, if you're doing it the wrong way, just get it right. Put it in the past and move forward from today forward. Four types of love in the Bible. The Bible talks about these four different types of love. Forgive me if I don't get the pronunciation correct with these four types. But there's a family love. It's 
storge love. You know how family is. You know how family is. We have that just that deep love. You know, that's called the storge love. You know, we're, we're, we're born into that, that family. We're adopted into that family. And it's a storge love. And there's a brotherly love and a friendship love that's called phileo. It's kind of like storge, but it's taking a friend and bringing them into your family with that phileo love and operating out of a storge love with them. Showing them what it's like to be in a family. And that's what the body needs to do, to do is to walk into that, walk into that kind of love, that store gay love, that phileo love. Some of you might say ouch on this one. There's a romantic love. An eros love. I think that's pronounced right. I don't know. If not, look it up. E-R-O-S. <laughs> this love is between a husband and a wife only. It's an intimate love, but it's reserved for a husband and wife. You take that for whatever it means to you. This intimate love is reserved for a husband and wife. Storge love is for a family. Family type of a love, phileo love, is a bringing a friend into the family or loving a family with a devotion to that person. You remember when Jesus wept? The only the shortest Bible verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. And that's talking about Jesus feeling the hearts of the people and in feeling their hearts, knowing how that hurts that Lazarus was in the tomb. He knew he was getting ready to raise him. But yet he stopped for a moment and experienced what they were experiencing. And he felt that and he wept. Because he could relate to them because he's human. He could relate to that kind of love. But there's a love that's greater than all these loves, and that's an agape love. That's the kind of love that Jesus loves every one of us with. It's an agape love. It's a tremendous love that never fails. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter what sin you step into, he loves you, and he's going to continue to love you in that doesn't make it right and doesn't give you the right to continue in it the sin but he does love you in it he's an amazing God all these types of love are good and all these types of love are from God 1 Peter 4 8 says this above all keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers a multitude of of sin because love covers a multitude of sin let me back up to the eros love I'm not saying you can't develop an awesome relationship and you go on dates and enjoy that development of a relationship I'm not saying that I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, is to abstain from the romantic part of that until you step into the marriage. That's all I'm saying. Honor the Lord. He paid an ultimate price for us to have this kind of love. He gave his son. He gave his son. So what is your ideal of love? Is it a give-to-get type of love? Some people love that way. I'll love you if you do this for me. I'll love you if you do that for me. I'll go this far if you go this far. That's not an agape love. That's a conditional love. Agape love is unconditional love. No matter what you go through, no matter what happens, this is the love that we need to learn how to operate out of. An agape love. Or is your love like this, a knock-down, drag-out fight at times? I remember my sister, when she was, uh, she would be on the bus when we were little kids. 
And she had these two redheaded girls that, uh, that she was friends with. Not quite as red as Darlene's because they didn't have hair dye back then like that. I suppose if you had the right colored grape, you could squeeze it in your hair and make it change. But these were redheaded girls. And man, redheads are fiery. If you guys know anything about redheads, they're, they can get fired up, man. I mean, I dated a redhead once. It wasn't good. She was feisty. Wow. Sorry, Shelly, I didn't tell you about that. It was years ago, honey. Um, <laughs> but these two red-headed girls, I remember my sister, they'd get in a fight. Man, they would be pulling hair and everything on the bus. My bus driver, you guys probably maybe didn't have a bus driver like this, but my bus driver would stop and let them get out and let them fight. They would wait for them to get done. Anybody that fought any time, he would just stop the bus and get off. He would wait for them to get done. Are you guys done? And when they get done fighting, they'd all get back on the bus and we'd go, go home. It was crazy, but that's just how he did it. He didn't turn it into the school. He didn't do nothing. He just let them fight it out, let them get it over with and be done with it. And man, my sister would get back on the bus and they'd be furious and they'd sit in two different seats away from each other. <laughs> the next day, they'd be in the same seat, loving on one another. And I'm like, what kind of relationship is this? But some people love that way. It's a misconception of what really love is. I don't think it's a good type of friendship to have those kind of like that or a marriage or, or anything, I think. I don't think it's a good idea for love, to love that way. 1 Corinthians 16, 14 says this, that all that you do be done in love. Everything you do, let it be done in love. Eric, I'm so glad you're here this morning. So thankful. That perseverance is going to take you a long way, man. To come out of the emergency room next to death with a broken spleen and ribs and whatever else is going on with your skull and everything that's going on with you and to go, you know what, I'm going to go to church today. That's going to take you a long way, man. That's going to take you a long way. You keep walking like that. You watch what he's going to do with that. It's good stuff. Family, friends, husbands, and wives sometimes show this kind of love, knock down, drag out, fighting type of love. When it's toxic... It's not good for any relationship. Family love is precious and to be treasured. The bonds that we build in families. This church family, the bond that I'm trying to build here, is going to be remarkable what God's going to do with that. It's the kind of love that we, that we grow in and family love that we grow in. We watch out for one another. We respect one another. We look out for one another. We help one another. Like Mike and Bobby. Come to help me. Todd Maxwell, come to help me with the youth center. Everyone that's been to help in just building this place, thank you. This kind of love that we want to share, that brotherly love. It's just amazing. We learn how to walk in it right and correctly. It's just going to rock our world. But because of misunderstanding, sometimes love is broken. Love is broken to a nothingness. And you have to check and see who your friends are, who your real friends are. Not your Facebook friends, the 10,000 that you have. They're not your friends. I said in the last service, I wish they would have a little button on their says an acquaintance. They just make them all your friends. And it dilutes the name of friend. Dilute what friend really means. They're not your friends. If you broke down, they wouldn't come and get you. You might have two on there. Maybe. If you needed out in a tough situation, they wouldn't be there. You're just sharing your stuff with them that's, that that they have no business knowing. You're sharing things with them they have no business knowing. 
and with the rest of the world, whoever else is watching. You might have to log out of, out of your Facebook. I, I didn't get on Facebook. I had to log back in. I never logged out. They're doing these things. They probably got your passwords now. They're really going to dabble in your life a little bit. They already have been. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be good. But love with conditions can change the type, change the love. If you have conditions to your love and your family and your friends and your spouses, it can all change. God's love is everlasting. It's unwavering. It's ever, never failing. It never gives up. How do you show love to one another? You guys remember 9-11? I'm sure you all do. 9-11 when they had the planes going to the towers and the plane going to the Pentagon and, and the one crashed to the ground. You know, the guys on the one that crashed it down, they, tro- they showed the true love for country. They knew where that plane was going. They knew exactly where it was going. It was going for the White House. They knew exactly where that plane was going. They knew they were going to go out one way or another. So they did what what love would have did. They took it down in a different place to save multitudes of lives. That's the kind of love I want to have. But the other guys, in their hearts and in their minds, they really thought that they loved God in a way that they were doing something for Him. They really thought by taking the plane and crashing into the tower and killing all those people was doing something glorious for God. It wasn't. Their conception of love was totally off, totally wrong. And, there, and there's amazing people. There's amazing people in that country. You guys dig back in the stories of the Bible and it'll tell you why it's the way it is. Because of a a relationship that wasn't supposed to happen. And then a child that wasn't supposed to be here. And through that child caused a division in the land. And through that it just went on and on and on and on. So imagine the sin that you have in your life. Where it can go. And how far it can take people away from the truth of God. From the love of God. From the way of God. It took people so far away from God and who he really is that it caused them to drive, fly a plane into a tower and kill all those people because of their misconception of love. Uh, here we go. I've been here before. So what I'm getting ready to say, if it, if it pertains to you, some are having a romantic love in the world today and are not in a position to have that kind of a love. They're just not. The world's full of people who are having a wrong type of situation, a wrong type of love in a situation they're not supposed to be in. All I'm saying is this with with that statement, and I felt like the Lord wanted me to say this today, and and it, it is hard for me. And again, I've been here. If you're not married, wait until you are. If you're not in a right relationship, if you need to get out of one, go into another, just from this day forward, make it right. Because if you're living in a relationship that is unhealthy, and unholy, it's sin. It is sin. 
Therefore, you're living in sin. I don't want to live in sin, and I don't want anybody in this body or any other body to live in sin. There are people that use love as a tool to get what they want in life. Stop. Stop doing it. Use it in the right way. Love in the right way. Love in the right fashion. If you're going to date, date. If you want to do things, get married. But make sure it's of God. Make sure it's the one that God wants you with. Where'd my time go? Because I think I have more time in the last service. <laughs> you guys doing to me? <laughs> God is love, and in Him is no sin or no darkness at all. So that's how much His love covers. He's, he is. There's no sin in God. There's no darkness in God at all. Period. At all. If we say that we love Him, we ought to walk as He walked in love, whether love like He loves. In love, there is no sin. 1 John 1, 6 says this, and this is the word of God. 1 John 1, 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. We do not practice the truth. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, yet walk in sin, yet walk in unholiness, yet walk in Anything you want to put in that area that's not holy, that's not of God. It says we lie and do not practice the truth. Truth is that if we sin, we lack love. 1 John 3, 6, 6 this, says this. And you guys, when you take, when I give you these scriptures, you know, there's some of them that, that I don't know the, all the ins and outs of them. And you're supposed to study to show yourself approved. Take the scriptures that I give you and study them and show yourself approved in the scriptures. But don't just look at me and take it verbatim in what I'm saying. Ask the Lord what it means to you. First John 3, 6 says, No one, no one who abides in him sins. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has seen him or known him. Study to show yourself approved in that. It's just the word of God. I don't know what we have up here. Whoever says in him, whoever stays in him sins not. Whoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. About the same thing. What version is that? Okay. Same thing. What is sin? So you ask, what is sin? Sin, therefore, is to know to do the right thing and you don't do it. That's sin. So if you know something's right to do, you know you're supposed to do something right and you choose not to do it, then you're sinning. You're willfully sinning against God. You're willfully transgressing against what His Word says. I encourage you this morning to step away from that. Step away from the sin, the sin nature, through sanctification setting yourselves apart for him Proverbs 3 5 and 6 and I'll close here trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding that's verse 5 See, we do that a lot. We lean on our own thinking, our own understanding of what, what we think is right or what we think is wrong. 
The Bible says lean not in your own understanding. Not into your own thinking of what you think it might say. You might take these verses and say, well, that don't apply to me. Yeah, it does. No sin is no sin. It does apply to you and it applies to me. Jesus came fully man, but fully God. And he, he didn't sin once. Could he have sinned? I believe he could have. Because he was fully man. But because he... Because of the love that was in him for his people, it created an environment that he could not sin in. Because being God, and because of God, and because of his love for God and his love for man. Second part of that says, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Put him first and watch how everything lines up. Keep him first. Watch how everything lines up. Love him and learn how to love like him. Then watch what happens with your family the love that you have for your family. Watch what happens with the love that you have for your friends. True friends, not Facebook friends, but your true friends. And watch what happens in your marriage. When you love with the agape love, all these loves will line up and they'll be operating in the right way. But you have to line up with the agape love, unconditional love. And then your family, your friend, and your relationships are going to line up. They have to. They have to. Learn what agape love is. Study it. Learn it. Walk in it. Take what I said today. Hold fast to it. Let the Lord guide you. I love you. I do. You guys are amazing. I love all of you. You're a great, great, great group of people. Let's stand. Yeah, 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 we love you, Lord. Yeah, we do, we do. We do, we love you, Lord. Yeah. Close your eyes. What's he showing you? It's okay. What's he showing you? All I'm asking you to do is be faithful. All I'm asking you to do is represent Jesus Christ well in your life, in your lifestyle, in everything that you do, represent him well. In your actions, in your Facebook post, in your social media post, whatever else is out there. Keep your eyes closed. I'll tell you the only reason I have Facebook, and this is the only reason. It's because the devil meant it for evil, but God means it for good. We can use what the devil means for evil and use it for good. My wife networks on social media, and she is amazing. She keeps up with what, what's going on and what people need. And she's using it for good. Learn how to do that. I tell you what, be accountable to somebody. Before you make a post, share it with a friend in a text and ask them if it's a good thing to post. Find a powerful person you can text that to. Say, I'm getting ready to post this on Facebook. Of course, some of you would be an all-day thing. But getting ready to post this on Facebook, you think it's good? And watch them say, yeah, probably not. Let's just keep that to ourselves. Keep that between you and God. Keep that in your family. You know if you're sinning right now. I'm talking if you're trifling in sin, I don't care what it is, how big, how small it is, not one's greater. Not one sin is greater in the eyes of the Lord. Sin is sin. And if you're sinning, stop. If you're sinning, stop. 
Get right with God. Study to show yourselves approved. In and out. Inside out. The altars are open this morning. I want you to come and pray. The Lord has shown you, if he's shown you any little bit of sin, I don't care how big it is, you come and you get rid of it. And you treat his son with some respect and some dignity. And you represent him well. And you represent this house well. Again, I love you guys, and I really, really do. I know this has been hard for you, and it's been hard for me just to give it this way. But I feel like that's what the Lord said to do this morning. I'm walking fully in it. Walking fully in it. Come on, guys. Come on. If a man can fall down an 11 foot place into a concrete, through a hole into the concrete, and come to the altar and pray, you can too. If you have no sin, that's great. I applaud you. You guys know. If we're going to move to that next phase, that next level that God wants us to, we're going to have to be a sin, sinless church. I'm not saying that you're not going to fall, and I'm not saying you're not going to fail. The Word of God says, if you do, you have an advocate, Jesus Christ. If you're in right relationship, you have an advocate, Jesus Christ. You have the right fellowship. Having fellowship with Him. Come on, guys. You know what? I'm not, I mean, I got five minutes left. I'm not going to beg you. You know what's right. You know what's wrong. You guys make the decision how you want your life to turn out. Because I tell you what, most of you are not where God wants you to be. And most of you are not even where you want to be in life. It's on you. I gave you the message from my heart, from the Lord. It's on you now. It's on you. Check your attitudes. Check your lifestyle. Learn about agape love and walk in it. Teens, don't forget about next week. Make sure Shelly's got your number before you leave. Make sure Shelly's got your number so we can keep in touch this week, throughout this week, to see what's going to go on. If you got friends that want to go, make sure the friends that we know, friends that are going to not give us a fit. Just thank you, Father. These teens are going to come and be a chaperone. You have to have a form as well. You guys have an amazing week. Don't get in a wreck in a blizzard on the way home. I'll be gracious to you. Thank you, Father. Father, we just ask that you would go with each and every one. Father, you know everything about them. You know their hearts, their hearts' desires, and everything that they're perceiving, Lord. How they're perceiving love. God, let them perceive love in the right way. That they can deliver it in the right way. That they can testify of you in the right way. We glorify you. We love you. Bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen.